Okay, I guess I'm just going to start. Hello, everyone. I'm Babak uh, Sarashki, and uh, I'll be speaking to you today about starting X, um, just an overview and how to get started with it. Um, <clears throat> first of all, uh, here's the agenda that I will cover. Uh, starting X Kubernetes, what is it? What does it do? I will share with you a starting point where to start playing with uh, starting, uh, starting X if you want to just experiment with it. Where, how would you uh, go about? And then uh, lastly, I will uh, ask you to consider joining the community and contributing and answer questions. First of all, what is uh, Starling X uh, Kubernetes project? It's a private cloud software project uh, that deploys Kubernetes across uh, dedicated servers distributed across uh, geographically uh, uh, geographic locations. It scales uh, from a single server, a simplex model, uh, to a distributed uh, to a distributed cloud architecture that also includes duplex uh, systems at remote locations uh, along with storage and worker nodes. It provides you with, a manage uh, with management and orchestration tools for uh, distributed uh, deployments and uh, is de facto a single solution that uh, scales very well. Uh, that along with its characteristics and performance and HA make it uh, very well suited for distributed and uh, cloud deployments and as well as edge deployments. Um, it provides you essentially with both day one and day two uh, operations. Day one being the day uh, when you receive the order to go ahead and do the installation and configuration of your, infra uh, of your infrastructure and day two being the <clears throat> operation, fault management uh, of all components, including the server hardware, uh, operating system and kernel, as well as the components that, um, uh, that are uh, included, such as Horizon and uh, Barbican, <clears throat> uh, as well as services that you might, be, uh, that you might have running under. This, is, uh, this slide is a little bit outdated, but nevertheless, it shows what uh, is involved with Starling X. Um, in the purple, that is the, oops. Uh, on the purple side, that is where the uh, Starling X adds value. Integrates very well with Kubernetes, sits on top of a hardened Linux um, with a number of open source projects such as open source as well as open stack projects, uh, such as Horizon, Ceph for storage, Calico, um, and on top we have uh, Kubernetes with Helm chart, uh, with Helm as a Kubernetes API, um, client API or uh, application manager. We have Armada, but Armada is being phased out uh, from Starling X, it's going to be Flux CD and Docker registry, a private Docker registry that sits on top of the controller, which in this case, in case of a distributed cloud, uh, it would be the system controller, and in case of a duplex, it would be just the controller itself. Uh, scalability of... Uh, Starling X, uh, as I said, it scales from a single server where you have a, basically a controller that can function as both storage and worker to a dual or duplex uh, uh, architecture where you have two controllers. You may add, you may choose to add storage and worker nodes to multiple servers. <clears throat> So basically, the deployment models uh, of 5G, uh, as I mentioned, it scales deployment models from one to hundreds of servers. 
for a wide area of use cases. Uh, in telco, it would be VRAN um, or industrial IoT, uh, autonomous vehicles, as well as uh, just pure compute, uh, computation if you want to do uh, augmented reality or virtual reality. Starling X does support uh, inclusion of GPU. Uh, its aim is to minimize infrastructure footprint. So in case of Starling X, let's say you end up with an Intel processor that has 64 cores. We use only two cores for the platform. We use only two cores for managing the platform, managing the devices. The rest of the cores, in this case, would be about 64 in, uh, two full, full cores, so in this case we would be using four cores, including the threads. Uh, so uh, as such, you would have 60 cores dedicated for your application. Um, it, as I mentioned, its, uh, its uh, models include the simplex, which is a single server, duplex model, uh, and a minimum of two servers with optional worker and uh, storage nodes, and all of the above in a distributed cloud environment as well. Okay, that's basically a two-minute introduction about uh, Starling X, but where do you start with that? And I've been talking about distributed cloud, um, central controller or central cloud. So on top, that is where we would start with our central, uh, central cloud or system controller, and uh, then the edge devices, the installation of the edge devices or provisioning of the edge clouds would be instantiated from the central, uh, central cloud or system controller, as we call it. And if you count this, and uh, if you count the number of servers that we have here, it's about 20 servers. So the question is, how do you experiment with Starling X if you need 20 servers in a distributed environment? Right? Not many of us have 20 servers handy. So Starling X has a project, tools project, that uh, is used for uh, uh, that gives you the build tools, a consistent uh, software development for building, as well as um, scripts for virtualization. Uh, by default, it supports the virtualization of simplex and duplex. But as I mentioned, a distributed cloud consists basically of simplex or duplex models, uh, simplex and duplex, where the duplex has to be in the central, uh, um, central location, and the subclouds can be simplex. So theoretically, we can essentially build a distributed cloud with these um, components. And uh, here, basically, what we do is we instantiate the duplex on the right. We call it our central controller. On the left, we instantiate the simplex, call it our uh, subcloud. And what's in between them is basically plumbing for connection between central cloud to the subcloud. And uh, the connection between them, there is an OEM connection and there is a management interface. Um, the management interface has to be routable. So the plumbing in here basically gives us the routing. And I have this basically set up on one of my laptops here. And uh, later this afternoon, I will have a, I will go through that. Um, I have another session where I will basically demo um, instantiating the distributed cloud on my laptop. And that's the, and I also have a set of scripts that are at the end of this, um, presentation which you can download and use. And once we um, create the 
VMs, we instantiate the VMs, we go through the process of um, installation, configuring the system controller. Thereafter, we uh, uh, install and provision the subcloud. Once everything is done, um, we can basically log on to the system controller's horizon interface and see our subcloud. And we can dive into our subcloud and see that it is online, deployment status is complete, and more than anything, sync status, it says that's in sync. Um, the, what, what it means when it says in sync means that um, it is at the same patch level as the system controller. The two are at the same patch level. And that's good for if you want to just experiment with it, uh, with Starling X and you have not been exposed to it, that's one path to take. Uh, on top, you see a critical alarm. Um, that critical alarm is because I only have one controller. I don't have a standby controller right now. That is uh, why, the, uh, why we see that critical alarm. And again, this afternoon, I will have a demo illustrating this right on the laptop. Community and contribution. Uh, Starling X is, uh, as I said, Starling X is a fully integrated project that delivers you Kubernetes. And we would like to ask uh, anyone who wants to get involved, please do get involved. And I have a number of links here. Bugs are tracked uh, via Launchpad. Uh, we follow the same OpenStack uh, development process as anyone else, and ideas are introduced via specs, uh, requests are, um, uh, via specs as well as uh, storyboards, and we have weekly meet, uh, bi-weekly meetings. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Uh, no, on the subcloud, uh, so it actually supports more than hundreds if we count the subclouds, right? Because the subcloud, from the system controller's perspective, the subcloud that it is connected to, it's basically the main controller, right? That main controller within the subcloud can, can then go ahead and instantiate other, or provision, not instantiate, provision other uh, units within its own environment. Right, so it can be a duplex and can go ahead and add as many worker nodes and as many compute nodes, uh, worker and storage nodes as needed. So the 100 is um, just for the system controller. Mm -hmm. And I think it goes at, if I'm not mistaken, I think the last time that we tried that was about 1,000. A, a thousand. A thousand yeah, that's that's the. Mm -hmm. If I am not mistaken, I believe. Okay, so that would basically be a thousand subclouds with uh, around hundred uh, nodes per subcloud. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yes. Is it possible to have more controllers than two for each individual subcloud? Uh, is it possible to have more than two controllers for each subcloud? Um, within within the subcloud, yes. Within the subcloud, because the way uh, the system controller connects to the subcloud is via um, BMC, by a Redfish API, so it does need to know one Redfish API, uh, one server. But theoretically, you could actually extend it to have more than uh, one controller in that case. Yes. Uh, well, okay, so the number of ports that you could get away with uh, can be um, 
can be basically, if I'm not mistaken, let me think. In case of distributed cloud, we need at least two interfaces. No, no, uh, uh, processors. Oh, processors, yes. So um, the, uh, yes, so we use two full cores for the platform. That means for the device drivers, for root file system, any daemon that runs on the system, these guys run on two full cores. Pardon me? Yes, right. But the, and, and we assign the rest of the cores for applications, for the pods to, be ex, uh, to run on. Yes? Um, give me an example when you would need it. I mean, I cannot, because the purpose of the system is to run applications, right? Um, I don't know if there is any a supported way of increasing the um, the number of platform cores that are used by the platform. There certainly, it, it certainly is possible to do that, but uh, we recommend essentially two full cores for the control plane. Okay. Yes. Hi, um, can you say something on the Kubernetes version that you're using? And is it, is it the recent version? Do you need some changes or is it just upstream? Uh, yeah, so we have done some changes on the, on the Kubernetes side. Um, we support multiple, we can support multiple versions of Kubernetes. Um, I believe if the, if I'm not mistaken, the latest one that we are su uh, supporting is 1.2.1. Um, but as I said, we can increase, uh, we can change the uh, Kubernetes version. Uh, have there been changes? One of the changes that Starling X and uh, has is the concept of uh, isolated CPUs or isolated cores and core pinning. Essentially, when you go with VRAN and uh, you have a DPDK application running, you need to make sure that, that DP nothing else runs on that, right? So that's one of the changes that we had to apply in Kubernetes. Yes. How do I? Okay, let me see if I understand the question correctly. How do we? Like lower sub traffic, like how do you deal with that? Sorry, I didn't hear it. Oh, oh, okay. How do we uh, how do we track and make sure that the node that wants to connect? So the subcloud is essentially an independent unit. Okay. Think about it this way: the subcloud is an independent unit from the system controller's perspective, or from its own perspective, and its management and configuration is done through the system controller. So. Um, That is a good question. I don't think that that has been addressed, or I'm not 100 percent sure if that has been addressed. But uh, I would think that is more on the application's perspective rather than the platform. Yes. Okay, so uh, there is, uh, so question one is how do we instantiate the subcloud, correct? Um, from the system controller, we have a command called DC manager. 
distributed cloud manager that is uh, uh, that we basically instantiate with a set of inputs. One of them is the OEM IP. The other one is the uh, BMC address of the device that we want to uh, connect to. And um, uh, another one is the um, set of variables and configurations that the subcloud has to be instantiated with. So there is a basically an API and a tool that we use from the system controller to connect to the BMC via Redfish, mount the CD, reboot the system, instruct it to do the installation, and uh, once the installation is completed, then we go, uh, the tool goes ahead and says, okay, now go ahead and uh, run the an Ansible uh, bootstrap script. That will um, then take the input that we have supplied and instantiate the cloud. So that is the first question. Uh, what was your second question? Yes. <laughs> yes. Correct. Okay, so there is no multi versioning in a way that different subclouds uh, run their specific versions there? Uh, no, there isn't. So the, the idea is to keep everything at the same level, right? So if, if put differently, if there is a security bug or if there is a bug you want, that bug applies to everyone. Yes. No, you can see the storage from the center. So for via Horizon, so if you come uh, to the session this afternoon, where we are, where we have this running on a on a virtual, uh, in a virtualized environment, yes, you can see all the way down to the processor, and storage nodes uh, within the subcloud or storage devices of the controller, subcloud controller. Do we rely on Kubernetes solely, and or do we also use Starling X addition? Oh, removing a subcloud, adding or removing. Um, so, adding the subcloud, uh, do we rely on Kubernetes? Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, because we do use Kubernetes in, uh, in order to add a subcloud. So the DC manager that we have, it eventually goes ahead and does a cube config, uh, pass a, a cube uh, cuddle apply of a deployment config file. Uh, so yes, Kubernetes is used in that instance. When we want to remove a subcloud, uh, no, we don't. I don't see where we would use Kubernetes in that instance. It's just an entry that we uh, that we erase in the system controller. Yes. Uh, more detail about the hardened Linux. Um, Well, there are a number of patches that have been applied that we apply on top of Linux, right? So uh, we uh, again for the one of the uh, one of the constraints in VRAN. Let's say I don't know if you're familiar with. I'm sure you're familiar with FlexRAN. One of the constraints between FlexRAN is latency, right? System latency, system uh, jitters. We have to fix that in the kernel. So standard kernel will not achieve that. Um, uh, will not achieve to give you five uh, consistent 10 microsecond 
latency or below 10 microsecond latencies, uh, st the standard kernel will not achieve that. Uh, so that's one of the examples that we have done. Another example would be the core uh, isolation and pinning uh, to make sure that by default, when you use an isolated core, when you instruct Kubernetes to give you an isolated core, that you really get an isolated core and you don't end up getting a bunch of interrupts uh, or IRQs on your, uh, on your core. So that's for, these are, for instance, examples. Um, let me see if I have another example. Uh, this here is an instance of, uh, I just put this up here for the uh, to illustrate that. So on top we have the system controller. Uh, just to sh show um, the distributed cloud, from the system controller we reach out to the small edge clouds and we say, okay, go ahead, this is a single server, go ahead and instantiate that, right? Go ahead and put your uh, put the cloud on the, on there, and then on the large controller, large to medium edge uh, side, we instantiate the first controller, and then the second controller, uh, and then that controller that we have instantiated will be responsible to go ahead and instantiate the rest of its subcloud. Um, Any questions on this? Yes. Um, what architecture do you support in terms of whatever Kubernetes? Oh, uh, well, we run, uh, right now, we run so, uh, an, an um, Intel architecture, AMD architecture, or x86 architecture can, uh, can run that. Uh, it's not yet on ARM, if that is your question. Yes. Uh, as of right now, the system is solely on Intel architecture. Uh, but uh, it does come with, um, and that's something that we are working on, uh, it does come with uh, uh, built-in support for a number of accelerators, both Lucas side and uh, inline accelerators. Some of those inline accelerators, not some, many of them are using ARM processors. Uh, where they uh, basically offload the L1 and L2 of a VRAN uh, onto the, uh, onto the uh, accelerator. So from that angle, yes, there is some arm. Yeah. Can you, do you support K3S? Uh, do, do, uh, no, we don't. It's Kubernetes. Kubernetes K8. Okay. So again, I will have another session this afternoon, uh, and my intention is not to give you a full uh, 10 minute, you know, hour long uh, what is and what is not uh, starting X, but to give you the tools to experiment with it, play with it, and see how it works, and see if it fits your, uh, your projects or if you want to contribute, uh, again, we welcome any contribution. Thank you.